The DeBarge family was one of the most successful R&B groups of the 1980s. The family group consisted of brothers L, Randy, James, Mark, and Sister Bunny. But even before the DeBarge came out in the 1980s, they had two older brothers named Bobby and Tommy, who were members in the music group named Switch. With Bobby DeBarge as lead vocals, his voice was able to seduce fans with falsettos, beautiful love songs with harmonies. Bobby DeBarge was born on March 5, 1956 in Detroit, Michigan. His real name was Robert DeBarge Jr., named after his father, Robert DeBarge, who was a white man, and his mother, Adeline DeBarge, was a black woman. Now, Robert DeBarge Sr. would physically abuse his wife and children, and sexually abuse them too. Out of all the kids though, Bobby would get it the worst. He was abused physically and sexually by his father, more than the others, which made him bisexual later on in life. Adeline DeBarge, she would often call the police on her husband, but they never did anything because Robert Sr. was a white man married to a black woman at that time. Because of this, Adeline left Robert Sr. several times, but had to go back due to the fact that she had nowhere else to go. And as an unemployed black woman with 10 kids at the time, she had no one who was willing to help her and the family. Now growing up, Bobby and his brothers and sister would face a lot of problems in school and in the neighborhood because they was biracial. The family would go to church and sing to escape all the pain they had to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. The Barge family was so musically inclined though that they could play anything by ear. In high school, Bobby and his brother Tommy started playing gigs with local acts. And in 1975, a friend of Bobby's got him a job to play piano with Barry White at the time. But Barry White ended up going solo and Bobby and his friends began working on a demo to shop to record labels. Now, while other group members headed to LA, Bobby stayed home and ended up getting hooked on heroin and was left out of the group. But his friends stayed focused on their dreams and after traveling to California, his friends ended up meeting Jermaine Jackson and his wife Hazel Gordy on an elevator. They gave their demo to Jermaine Jackson and within 24 hours, he had called to tell them that he wanted to sign a deal. Bobby's friend Greg Williams, now with an audition, had asked him to rejoin the group. So Bobby kicked the drug habit, got clean. By the time he got to LA, he was ready. Now, while performing in front of Barry Gordy and Motown execs, they were impressed with the band due to their ability to switch to different lead vocalists and instruments during a song. And that's how the group got their name, Switch. And Barry Gordy signed them on the spot to his new label, Gordy Records. 18 months later, they released their self-titled debut album in 1978, which featured their first top 10 R&B hit single, there will never be, which pushed the album to certified platinum. The following year, they released their second certified gold album titled Switch 2 with the hit single, I Call Your Name, in which rumors suggest that Bobby wrote the song for Latoya Jackson, who he was dating at the time. But after him and Latoya broke up, friends say that that's when Bobby became depressed and his drug use grew more serious. Bobby found himself struggling with his own sexuality and began hanging out at gay bars and sleeping around with gay men. The drugs also made Bobby ego out of control. In 1980, Motown ended up signing the DeBarges and Bobby and his brother Tommy eventually quit the band Switch with one album left on their contract to help their family with their debut album. 
but because of their contractual obligations from their last record deal, they weren't able to join the DeBarge family. But Motown did end up giving Bobby a solo deal, but he was later dropped from the label because of his drug habit. Now desperate for money, as his music career began to slow down, Bobby and his younger brother Chico began selling drugs. And in 1988, he was arrested in Grand Rapids, Michigan on drug charges and sentenced to five years in prison. After doing this time, Bobby came home ready to perform and record music again. But now he was living with AIDS in which he probably contracted during his days in prison, according to his brother Chico DeBarge. Now Chico DeBarge stated in an interview that if Bobby got AIDS in prison and it was not through using dirty needles to inject heroin or other drugs, then that leaves open the possibility of homosexual activity. On August 16th, 1995, Bobby DeBarge died from AIDS complications. He was 39 years old. R.I.P. Bobby DeBarge. <laughs> 